All right, we're here with Morgan Zeggers, the founder and CEO of Young Americans Against Socialism. Morgan, thanks for being here today. I want to ask you first off, because this is the first thing that came to mind when I found out about what your group was doing is, there are a lot of conservative groups on campus. They do a lot of different things, but yours is really one of the first that I, I'm aware of that exists specifically to fight against socialism. Tell me a little bit about how you arrived at the decision that that's what you wanted your group to be about, uh, what the early steps were, and, and where you are right now. Well, it's kind of unique. Uh, basically, I had a full-time job in advertising at the time, and around November 2018, I saw the poll from Gallup that said, it's official, a majority of young Americans would now choose socialism for the future of the country. And I, I was just kind of baffled. I mean, I didn't know much about socialism. I just knew the basics, but I knew that it was a historic failure. I knew that it was a terrible thing to many people, millions of people. And so I did a lot of research. I worked with a really great staffer for Congresswoman Elise Stefanik. She's an absolute powerhouse. And together we put our minds together and said, let's make educational videos and put them on social media where 90% of young Americans have an account. And hopefully they can see that. And, and instead of saying you're wrong and make fun of them and say that you're the issue in this country, we want to show them the truth. We want to equip them with the truth so that when Bernie Sanders and the far left radicals, the few radicals that actually want to seize the means of production are lying to them, they'll be able to have the information to call them out and stand up for themselves. Well, you raise an interesting point. In my experience going on campuses talking to students, the argument of, oh, you're, you're a stupid socialist or, hey, it's so obvious it hasn't worked in Venezuela or any of these things, that doesn't seem to resonate. So, for example, you know, my dad fled uh, socialist Nicaragua uh, during their revolution. And what I found is you can tell someone about that history all you want, but if they've never been there, if they've never seen it with their own eyes, that argument only goes so far. So I, I often talk about the need to show the flip side of socialism and how capitalism is effective. What message have you found? is the most is the strongest is one that most resonates with young people what is the strongest argument you make to people against socialism yeah well we launched in august 2019 and so i've really been spending the last seven and eight months figuring out the key learnings from our first videos and then trying to develop to develop a more effective and efficient way to communicate i think what the most interesting thing that i noticed and you kind of brought this up when i speak on college campuses the thing that really lights the eyes up of the students in the classroom is talking about how we have capitalism and how capitalism has had its flaws, but how our limited dem democratic process of government has stepped in. We have a legislature, we have an executive branch, we have a judicial branch, and those combined have provided solutions for the issues of capitalism. I mean, I, I talk to the students, I'm like, do you know we have the Fair Labor and Standards Act? Do you know we have OSHA, the Occupational Safety and Hazards Administration? Do you know we have unemployment benefits? I mean, Bernie Sanders has said before that, you know, I hear a lot of people saying that bread lines are a bad thing. I mean, those are That's a good thing. At least you have food. And in our country, in capitalist countries, the rich get the food and the poor starve to death. That's just not right. We have a lot of really great systems to provide for the people who are down on their luck in the United States. I believe in a hand up, though. And so I'm a proud taxpayer. I, play, I pay taxes. And I, you know, when they go to unemployment benefits to help people get a hand up in society and to get back onto their feet, I love that. And so I think communicating with young people and saying, we have some really great programs that help people, both consumers and workers, protect them in the workplace, I, I think it really shows them that we're not here to just be some absolute conservative organization. Well, you touched a little bit about, a little bit on what Bernie Sanders' message is to these young people, and I think certainly to some degree the, the promise of free college, the promise of free health care is certainly attractive, but to me I, I find that there's got to be something deeper than that. There's got to be a reason why students are willing to go to someone so radical. There are a lot of answers that we don't know. Part of it is talking to students like I do, like you do. What have you found is something that maybe they have told you, or, or maybe, maybe former socialists, maybe it's just conservatives who talk to you and say, hey, you know, my friends like socialism because of X, Y, and Z. What do you find the underlying reason to be? Well, first of all, there is a, a general issue of ignorance. I mean, when I talk to college camp, uh, college students on campus, I've even gone and recorded them so that I can show people and, and older Americans the responses that I get because I just feel like they don't believe me that they really have no idea what they're talking about. And so I filmed these interactions and some people are like, oh, yeah, of course I'm a socialist. Uh, no, I can't name any socialist countries. Or, I mean, I've had people that say, oh, yeah, it just means, you know, creating equality. They really don't know that socialism equals seizing the means of production. And so that's the thing that I want to establish the most in my generation. Uh, what we need to make sure is that people our age understand Nordic Europe relies on capitalism and that, yes, they have big government programs. Yes, they have high taxes. But no matter what, they are on a foundation of a market economy, a capitalist economy, and they're proud of that. They are not rejecting that. Bernie Sanders is the one who, for 
decades has called for nationalizing industries, for government control of the economy, and that's completely different. And so when I see polls from victims of communism that say 70% of people our age would vote for a socialist, 70% of people our age would not seize the means of production if they were given the chance to. And so that's why I feel very optimistic about the future of the country. We just have to properly message these values. Well, I agree. I think there's a, a big disconnect. There's a misunderstanding among them. That's the silver lining, right, that they, they really aren't able to define socialism is, but that's also the danger. Uh, they're willing to support something that they don't fully understand, and that's what that, I think that's what we see going on. But like you, I, I'm sort of optimistic in that sense. Tell me a little bit about, outside of the educational videos, what are kind of your plans going forward, whether it's in this year, you know, in the coming years, um, are, you know, do you guys have chapters on college campuses? What are you planning? What, what's the next step for you guys? Yeah, well, so I know there's plenty of chapter organizations out there with really great uh, ground level organization on campuses. But what I'm focusing on, I started this to just have an efficient and effective way of communicating with my peers. I think that peer-to-peer -peer communication is the best way to do that. And so I think social media, where again, 90% of people have a social media account that are our age, that's the best way to reach them. And so in 2020, what we're going to be doing is focusing on the three issues that our generation cares about most. We're going to be talking about how the socialism doesn't solve those issues in the best way possible and how capitalism and common sense solutions both from Republicans and Democrats are going to be the best way to move forward. So that's talking about climate change and environmental issues, the affordability of health care, and of course the student loan crisis. And I think if we talk about those issues, it'll make it harder for the left to dominate those conversations. I mean, I what I say all the time is like, I'm from upstate New York. I grew up in the outdoors. I'm Most of the time I'm in monk boots and a Carhartt. And I, I literally live in the outdoors, was raised there, born and raised and now lefties who live in skyscrapers in cities where they barely ever go outside and experience the beautiful outdoors that we have in this country, they're dominating the conversation and saying that people like me don't care about the planet. And so I hope that conservatives, especially the ones at CPAC, hear that message tomorrow during my speech and are able to say, you're right, let's show, our gen let's show younger Americans that we care about the issues they care about. You actually triggered a question of mine. You know, it's not just Republicans and conservatives that can join in a fight against socialism. I still happen to believe there are a lot of moderate Democrats out there, especially among the youth. Again, they may not know they're moderate, but like you said, they're not willing. They, I don't think 80 percent, 70 percent of, of young people out there do want to seize the means of production. So have you had a lot of positive experience with maybe people who are independent or even Democrats who, who come up to you and they're like, hey, I'm against socialism also. I'm not a conservative, but I want to help. Yeah, well, I could say a lot of things about that one, but I, I have a few speeches where I've had Democrats, and one specific, Democrats came up to me and they said at the end, you know, I came here with a very closed mind and I came here to kind of, you know, heckle you a little bit, but I will say your argument is, is unimpeachable because you're not trying to make enemies of your generation. You're not trying to make a further divide between you and them. Instead, you're trying to bring them over to our, your side and expose the real enemy here, expose that they are being lied to. And they deserve the truth. I really believe they deserve the truth. But um, I, I think moving forward, I'm just very excited because I think our generation is one of the most creative, uh, entrepreneurial, innovative, capitalist generations that America's ever seen. We have the world at our fingertips with the internet, and that's not just with knowledge, it's also with our business opportunities. You can become a social media influencer, you can get famous on TikTok for making a 10 second video, and then make your entire life, you make so much money. But on top of that, you can sell products on Etsy that you make. I personally have a Zegger's Freedom Flag business. Uh, I make wooden American flags. I literally learned how to make wooden flags out of pieces of wood, $20 worth of wood, using a YouTube tutorial. And then I sold that wood for $150 in the shape of an American flag. It's beautiful. I paid off my student loans with it. And I, I know so many non-political or even left-leaning people who have amazing businesses on Etsy or they sell their services on Fiverr. I, I happen to think that's very capitalist, and I just don't think they're able to put two and two together. And so if we can combine those and show them that their values are very American, very capitalist, and they should be proud of those values instead of thinking capitalism is the dirty word, I think that would be an exciting project moving forward for Young Americans Against Socialism after we tackle these three main topics in 2020. I agree. Anything's possible in a capitalist society, and I think young, young Americans are willing to do that. Last question for you. Young students, older Americans, how can people help your organization? Where can they go to, to help you out? Well, thank you so much. Uh, first of all, whenever I get done speaking, I have older Americans that come up to me and they go, uh, can you please talk to my granddaughter, my grandson? They went to college for a semester, and now they came back as a radical lunatic leftist. Please talk to them. And so usually I'm like, okay, have them follow me on Instagram, and I'm happy to talk with them one-on-one, -on -one, but I'm 
I, I go send them to fightsocialism.org. It's our website. We're really working on building content, and we've only been around for seven months, and so we're, we have very few videos right now, but we're working hard to find the most efficient and effective way to communicate with them. And uh, so all of our videos are categorized on our website, whether that's socialism, capitalism, climate change, healthcare policy, and then, of course, the firsthand experiences of people who have lived through socialism. And I think that seeing those videos are going to be really helpful for the young people in our country. And any American that wants to show these can easily send them to our website. Um, but if anybody wants to donate, we need to make more videos, more and more, as we fight this scourge of socialism. So please donate. Fightsocialism.org is the website. I was going to say, I didn't know you'd only been around for seven months. Seems a lot longer. You're doing a great job. Morgan Zeggers, thank you for joining us. Thank you so much for having me.